everyone. This is the ninth lecture in real analysis and in this lecture we are going to discuss one-to-one -one functions, on-to functions and bijections. So we are going to give a definition of one-to-one -one function, provide an example and discuss the horizontal line test. We are going to define on-to functions, provide example and uh, we are going to discuss what bijections are and provide more examples. So as promised, let us begin with the definition of a one-to-one -one function. So by the way, if you want to review what is the definition of a function, you, uh, you can watch a previous lecture, lecture 8, and uh, the link to this lecture is provided in the description to this video. So uh, let x and y be on empty sets. Let f from x to y be a function. So this function f is one-to-one, -one, or another way to call it is an injection, if for every x1 and x2 in the set capital X, if the value f of x1 is equal to the value f of x2, then x1 is equal to x2. Okay, so let us try to understand what this means. And one way to understand this is to look at a function that, that is not one-to-one. -one. Let's just see what happens if, if the function is not one-to-one. -one. So let us look at this function, a parabola here. And let us draw a horizontal line. So this horizontal line is going to intersect the parabola at two different points whose x-coordinates we denote by x1 and x2. And these two points, they have the same y-coordinates. And this y-coordinate is equal to f of x1, and it's also equal to f of x2. However, we can see clearly that x1 is not equal to x2. So this function is not one-to-one -one function. So this is a not one-to-one -one function because there exist two points on the graph with uh, different x-coordinates in the same y-coordinate. So inspired by this example, we can formulate the horizontal line test. So if we have a curve in the plane R2, that curve is the graph of a one-to-one -one function if and only if every horizontal line intersects the curve at most once. So let us consider an example. So let us look at these two curves, A and B, and let us try to understand if they are graphs of one-to-one -one functions or not. So in the curve A, if we draw a horizontal line over here, it's going to intersect the curve at three different points. So this is not a one-to-one -one function. However, for the case B, if we draw a horizontal line, no matter where we draw the horizontal line, it's going to intersect the curve at most once. So this graph is a one-to-one -one function. So let us now define an on two functions. So as before, let x and y be non-empty sets. And suppose we have a function f from x to y. This function f is on two, or another way to call it is a surjection if the following holds, if for every little y in the set capital Y, there exists little x in the set capital X, such that f of x is equal to y. So this may sound familiar to you. If you remember in the previous lecture, which is by the way linked down below, if you want to watch it and recall what was in the lecture, so in the previous lecture, we defined the range of the function f as the set of all little y in the set capital Y, such that there exists a little x in the set capital X, such that f of x is equal to so y. So we may observe here that the function f from x to y is on to if and only if the range of the function f is equal to the codomain y. So by the way, y is called the codomain of the function f. So as an example, let us consider the function f from r to r, and it's actually really important what stands in here. The codomain of this function is r, uh, and the function is defined by the formula f of x equals to x squared. So the graph of this function is a parabola, 
And we may notice that if we look at the y coordinate negative 1, there is no point on the parabola that has the y coordinate negative 1. So for y equals to negative 1, there does not exist an x real number such that x squared is equal to negative 1. So the function f is not on 2. Well, let us now think if there is anything that we could adjust in the definition of this function to make it an on 2 function. So if we recall that the function f is on 2, if and only if the range of f is equal to the codomain, we will have an idea of how to adjust the definition of this function. So instead of r over here, we need to write the, the range of the function f. And so let us try to understand what is the range of our function. So if we take a point on the parabola here, the y-coordinate of that point is going to be uh, on the positive uh, vertical semi-axis. And so if we take points on the parabola, their y-coordinates are going to exhaust uh, the points from 0 to plus infinity. So the range of the function f is the interval from 0 to plus infinity. So then the function f uh, from r to the interval 0 to plus infinity, given by the formula f of x equals to x squared, this function is on 2. So just by rewriting this codomain here, instead of writing uh, r, just by writing 0 to plus infinity, we made this function on 2 function. So this is a very interesting observation. So we can always make a function an on 2 function by readjusting its codomain. So finally, let us define a bijection. So again, let x and y be non-empty sets and consider the function f from x to y. This function is called a bijection if it is both 1 to 1 and on 2. So if it is both 1 to 1 and on 2. So if we look at this diagram here, so if this is our set x and this is our set y, then the function f, since it is 1 to 1, is going to map different points from the set x. So if we have here x1 and x2 here, it's going to map them to different values in the set y. So f of x1 is going to be different from f of x2. Okay. So uh, this property is because f is a one-to-one -one function. And another uh, aspect is that if we take any point y in the set capital Y, then there will be some x in the set uh, capital X such that f of x is equal to y. And this is because the function f is on two. So this is just a... Um, a diagram that helps to understand what is a bijection. So let us consider the following example. Let us look at the function f of x equals to x plus 1 over x minus 2. So by the way, we just have a formula for this function here. We don't have uh, the range of the function and the codomain of the function. In your previous classes in calculus and pre-calculus, you have seen functions defined exactly this way. Uh, so it was probably uh, not mentioned what is the domain of the function. So if the domain of the function is not mentioned, then it is the set of all values x for which the computation or the, the formula for the function makes sense. So we are going to find the domain of this function and we are going to find the range of this function. And we are going to prove that the function f from the domain to the range is a bijection. So the first uh, order of business is we want to find the domain of the function f. So the only value of x for which the formula doesn't make sense is x equals to 2, right? Because then we would be dividing by 0, which is not defined. So the domain of this function is all of the real numbers such that x is not equal to 2. Now, the range of this function, uh, we need to find out what is the range of this function. So let y be a real number. 
we are going to try to find x in the domain of the function f such that f of x is equal to y. And depending on uh, whether or not we are able to find such an x, we are going to know what is the domain of this function. Uh, we, we are going to find what is the domain of the function by solving this equation f of x equals to y for x. So let us solve the equation x plus 1 over x minus 2 equals to y for x. So suppose that x is a real number that is not equal to 2. So this set here is the set of all real numbers except the number 2. Then x plus 1 over x minus 2 is equal to y if and only if x plus 1 equals to y times x minus 2. If and only if when we can distribute y in the right hand side here. So in the right hand side we get yx minus 2y. And then we can take yx and move it to the left side. And then we can take 1 and move it to the right side. So we get x minus yx is equal to minus 2y minus 1. And then we can factor out x in the left-hand side. So we, we get 1 minus y times x is equal to minus 2y minus 1. And finally, we can find that x is equal to 2y plus 1 over y minus 1 if y is not equal to 1. Like this, uh, the last uh, operation of dividing the equation by y minus 1, it wouldn't have worked if y was equal to 1. So we suspect that the range of the function f is the set of all y real numbers such that y is not equal to 1. So let us try to prove uh, that the range of the function f is indeed this set of all real numbers y such that y is not equal to 1. So if y is such a number, if it's a real number such that it is not equal to 1, then for this x, which is 2y plus 1 over y minus 1, which we took it from here, right? right, right from here, so x is equal to 2y plus 1 over y minus 1, if and only if x plus 1 over x minus 2 is equal to y, right? By this chain, chain of equalities, we know that, um, that uh, x equals to 2y over 2y minus 1, it is true if and only if, x plus 1 over x minus 2 is equal to y, which is uh, equivalent to saying that f of x is equal to y, right? So for every y in R such that y is not equal to 1, there exists an x equals to 2y plus 1 over y minus 1 in R such that f of x is not equal to y. So um, r minus 1 is a subset of the range of the function f. Now, what about y equals to 1? So if y is equal to 1, then f of x equals to 1 is equivalent to saying that x plus 1 over x minus 2 is equal to 1, which is equivalent to saying that x plus 1 is equal to x minus 2, which is equivalent to saying that 1 is equal to minus 2, which is a contradiction. So 1 is not in the range of f. So our conclusion is that the range of the function f is the set of all real numbers with the number 1 removed. So we can now summarize that our function f of x equals to x plus 1 over x minus 2 is defined on the domain r uh, minus 2, so the, all, the set of all real numbers except the number 2, and its range is the set of all real numbers except number 1. So we, can, uh, we want to show that this function f is a bijection. So first of all, because the range of this function is its codomain, this function is on 2. So because r minus 1 is the range of the function f, f is on 2. Remember, we said that if the codomain of the function is equal to its range, then the function f is on 2. So let x1 and x2 be two points in the domain of the function, which is r minus 2, and let it be such that f of x1 is equal to f of x2. We want to show 
that x1 is equal to x2, right? So if we do that, then by the definition of the one-to-one -one function, we will be able to conclude that our function f is one-to-one. -one. So uh, f of x1 is equal to f of x2 if and only if uh, x1 plus 1 over x1 minus 2 is equal to x2 plus 1 over x2 minus 2. Uh, so let us multiply this equation by the denominators. So we are going to get if and only if x1 plus 1 times x2 minus 2 is equal to x2 plus 1 times x1 minus 2. So then we can FOIL on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So we're going, we're going to get x1, x2 minus 2x1 plus x2 minus 2 is equal to x1, x2 minus 2x2 plus x1 minus 2. So then x1, x2 cancels out, negative 2 cancels out. Um, so we can collect all, the, all of the terms with x1 in, one, in the left-hand side and the terms with x, x2 in the right-hand side. So in the end, we are going to get uh, that 3x1 is equal to 3x2, which is true if and only if x1 is equal to x2, which is exactly what we wanted to show. So f is 1 to 1. So we showed that the function f from its domain to its range, given by the formula f of x equals to x plus 1 over x minus 2, we showed that this function is 1 to 1 and on 2, but that means that the function f is a bijection, and that finishes our example.